Hey guys, Wave618 here. Today we're going to do a market roundup looking at these nine markets right here. So we're going to start off essentially looking at the indices. We're going to take a look at the Dow, which is currently behind us on the screen right now, followed by the Nasdaq S&P 500. Then we're going to look at the leading stock that is Apple. Following on from that, we're going to look at our commodities. Gold, everyone is talking about gold right now. It's close to all-time highs. It's almost doubled its value in the last five years. Next up, we'll look at oil. It's made a little bit of a resurgence following on from its hammering in price. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then I'm going to talk about probably my favorite stock. It's a uranium stock. Probably the best stock that I see right now for a long-term investment. But... Then we go on to weed stocks, another interesting market. But last last but not least is Bitcoin. So this is what we're going to run through. Um, very interesting times. We've got next week a catalyst that I've been waiting for for a good amount of time now. And that's the US GDP second quarter data release. Very interesting update that I want to make on that subject and we're going to run through that shortly. But as we run into that time, which is this time next, so sorry, it's six days away. So it's Thursday next week. Uh, we can expect some pretty big volatility coming into the market. So lots of interesting stuff to talk about in today's video. If interested, then stay tuned. All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. So, um, yeah, we're going to run through these charts in this order right here. So if there is a particular chart of interest, obviously you skip through the video as you please. Uh, we're going to start with Dow just because it's got the most history behind it. And I want to show the main Elliott Wave count, which I have run through many times in the past. But we're just going to reiterate the, that in this video as we give a summary looking at these various markets. Now, before I jump into this, I will just quickly apologize to those of you that did try to use the discount link for the last um, for the group access. Uh, apparently, it wasn't working properly. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that again just for 48 hours. I'll post the link in the description to this video. So hopefully if you didn't manage to get it working with the last link it should be working fine now. So, yeah, that will be in the description to this video. So that's for access to the group, which obviously includes all my educational material as well. All right, with that said, let's jump on into the markets now. So first up is the Dow. So basically, you'll know if you've been following me now, I'm a big fan of Elliott Wave, Pitchforks, and horizontal levels, which of recent, I've been using what I call the oldest daily block to really plot these horizontal levels. Now, um, we'll see a few examples in within this video, but main thing to look at on this chart is the major pitchfork yeah so this is our post depression period here for the dow and we've got our first two clear waves yeah so first pivot goes at the start of your first wave second pivot at the end of your first wave third pivot at the end of your second wave we've got a shift pitchfork really held price really really nicely you can see here we stay pretty nicely between our upper median line and lower median line and then we saw a really nice run up to our upper warning line, went sideways, support at the median line, and now we're running up. We went up to the 1.5. And what I'm anticipating now is I am I do have a bullish bias. Um, and I do think that we can run higher, probably testing this upper median line, sorry, the 1.5 line of this pitch vault once more. Uh, I don't see us getting to the upper warning line on the Dow. I think Nasdaq certainly has a lot of power behind it. I think that can make an aggressive move higher. But looking at the Dow and S&P, which are more representative of the, the general economy and not just the tech sector, I think their move to the upside is going to be a lot more modest than on the Nasdaq. So, yeah, Dow Jones, I'm looking for a move up to around this point. Now, before we home in on this, I just want to show you... Um, the major catalyst that we have next week so this is pulled up just from fx street and it's basically our, obviously our gdp for the us uh q2 
Now I want to show you something very interesting. I don't know if this is manipulated or a glitch on the website or just new information coming in or what. But basically the consensus, I did my video uh, for the group yesterday and the consensus was minus 6.2%. Okay. Now considering the fact that we had minus 5% in Q1, you would have to expect a much bigger contraction in the economy than minus 6.2 that's what it was saying yesterday minus 6.2 all of a sudden it's changed to minus 35 literally i think this has changed today because I, I did check it earlier today it was saying minus 6.2 so as i say i don't know if it's a glitch or what but it's a massive change yeah minus 6.2 to minus 35 and what's the significance of this well whenever you get your result you compare it to the consensus because the idea is that the markets have already factored in the fact that we're expecting a, a contraction in the economy. So, you know, whether we get minus, uh, you know, 10% contraction in the economy, that's obviously much better than minus 35%. Hence, it would send the markets up. So basically, any figure that is better than minus 35% is actually a bullish signal. Yeah. So I think it's very interesting the foot they've suddenly dropped this figure down to minus 35 one week before the actual data is released. As I say, I'm not going to say accuse anyone or any organization of any manipulation. All I'm saying is it seems a little bit strange that they've set this pretty low uh, and I think it's probably looking about accurate to be honest. But um I think now that it's set pretty low there's a good chance that we beat this figure. And I had been anticipating, obviously, around that catalyst, it being a catalyst to send prices higher. Now there's a good explanation for it with this figure being very low. OK, so with that said, let's jump in and focus on the technical analysis. That's going to be all the fundamental analysis you're going to see for this video. Um, <clears throat> so the major Elliott wave count on the Dow following on from our 1929 depression. I had this as a wave one, two, three up to here. Our stagflationary period was a long drawn out wave four. And then we've gone into an extended fifth. So the fifth is this wave one, two, three. And then we have our uh, post.com drawback here, starting off our major wave four. We have a rally up into 2007. Then we get the financial crisis completing our wave four. And then we go into our terminal wave five of which seems to be in a wave five of five. So if we zoom in and just take a look at this, the way I've got it is this is a wave one, two. Then we get an extended third, which is one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Then we get our fourth, which is an expanding uh, triangle. Your megaphone pattern A, B, C, D, E. And then we go into a fifth. And I don't think we come much higher. OK, don't forget we're on the log scale. Everything that's happening up here is getting squashed. So I only think we get a slight higher move here would do very well to reach 30,000 here on the Dow. It'd be, I'd be very impressed if it manages to reach that. I do think it just manages to squeeze out an all time high. Um, but yeah, don't expect it to go much higher than that. Uh, and don't forget, this is all squeezed on the linear scale. It looks like this. Yeah, so. This is your linear scale. So just because it looks, you know, an all time high is actually going up to 30K is right up here. So it's actually a big move. All right. So this is what I'm expecting here on the Dow. Uh, let's just go back on the log scale and home in just a little bit further on what is going on for this final fifth that is going up here. Uh, as I say, looking for a move into around the 1.5 line. But I've got another pitchfork that I'm monitoring, and that's this one. Uh, and that can be seen best on the hourly, uh, on the linear scale. So it's following it best on the linear scale. I've got this initial move up. Uh, so first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. It's a shift pitchfork. And you can see we're hovering very nicely, hugging the lower median line here. Always good to see. And I anticipate it pushing up from here. And I'd be targeting the upper warning line of this pitchfork. Either the upper median line or the upper warning line come November 3rd. Basically, I'm, what I'm expecting is following on from this catalyst next week, I'm expecting us to run up to the November 3rd election, US election. Um, I expect a bullish run into that. 
And the reason I'm anticipating that as being a potential catalyst with a, for a sell-off is because don't forget all these markets right now, investor confidence is largely influenced by um, fiscal policy right now because monetary policy has been completely exhausted, interest rates at 0%, nothing else to be done to really stimulate the economy. And so we're relying on fiscal stimulus. Okay, now don't forget the US election represents a potential regime change, a, a potential fiscal change. Okay, so that's the biggest threat to investor confidence right now, because no one knows what if we do have a change in president, you know, what is going to be the impact on, you know, their attitude towards the stock markets and their fiscal policy, nobody knows. So that's, you know, a reason why there could be investor confidence lost at that point, especially if we're overbought. Uh, and it could be the catalyst for a sell off. OK, so that's basically what I'm looking out for a good run up to the upside over the next three months. So this is the pitchfall that I'm looking out for on the Dow, as I say, looking for a move up to around uh, 30,000 could push up a little bit past it to 31, perhaps. But I don't see it going much higher. Yes, I do see it making all time highs, but not going much higher than that. OK, so that was our Dow. Now, let's take a look at Nasdaq because Nasdaq is making obviously bigger gains. It's representative of tech stocks, which during the whole lockdown period due to COVID, you know, there's no you know, tech stocks have still managed to perform well and and they're outperforming the rest of the market. So money is flooding into tech at the expense of a lot of other stocks. So it is really uh, benefited a lot from the whole coronavirus outbreak. Now, uh, Nasdaq, so what I want to look at first, we'll go on the log scale, the long term pitch for it, we'll go on the weekly time to time frame to look at this. So this is following on from our uh, post credit crunch. Uh, so 2009 onwards. And again, we're looking at this as a five wave move, whereby I've got this as a wave one, two, three, four, and then we go into our fifth, of which we're in a fifth of fifth. And let's just take a look. Uh, just bear with me a moment. Yeah, so basically on the, on the NASDAQ, there is the potential for a run up to our upper warning line here. And again, you're looking for uh, an intersection between November 3rd, the election and the upper warning line. And it gives you a value of around 13 K. So that's around this point here. So up here, around 13 K. Yeah, so that's basically where I've got my preliminary target for NASDAQ. Uh, and again, it suggests a pretty aggressive move up. Now, you can see how this pitchfork has held price very well. It's a shift pitchfork. And we are currently being held up just about by the median line. Obviously, over the last few days, we've had a bit of a pullback in um, in the NASDAQ. But you can see we're being held up by the median line pretty nicely. So, yeah, still looking strong in the NASDAQ. And what I want to show you is going in on the daily now. There's another pitchfork that I'm closely monitoring, and that's this smaller pitchfork. Um, yeah, this is the pitchfork that I'm really monitoring right now. So we did come out of it slightly. So I was looking at this this initial impulsive move to the upside. So first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, it's a shift pitchfork. Again, holding on to price nicely, lots of tests of the median line, supported by the lower warning line. And we did get a little bit of a breach to the downside. Yeah, on the daily time frame, you can see we did have a candle come out. We're yet to see where the closing candle will be, but it looks like it's going to be pretty close to the lower warning line. And I think next week we find ourselves back within the pitchfork quite comfortably. OK, so this is the pitchfork that I'll be following to time any entries uh, with a run up up until November 3rd. And I expect the ultimate catalyst being that data release next Thursday with the US GDP. All right. So this is the Nasdaq. This is the pitchfork that I'm really monitoring here. Uh, the anyway count, there's so many different ways to plot it because we've got a lot of it's not looking so clean as an impulse to the upside. There is a lot of overlappy price action. So it's open to many different Elliott wave counts. That's why I've not really given it a count right here for the last bit of the move up. But you can see we continue to progressively move higher. 
and yeah we do have a little bit of a breach and i want to see us back within this pitchfork failure to do that will be a concerning and a sign of weakness for the for the stocks okay so that is nasdaq as i say i can see us going up to 13k on nasdaq next up i want to take a look at smp all right smp again like the dow i don't expect to see major fireworks yes i do expect it to continue running higher um i make an all-time high but not like in the same fashion as the nasdaq so here on the s p again as i drew on the nasdaq we've got our post 2008 um pitchfork here first pivot second pivot third pivot shift pitchfork holding price pretty nicely very nice test of the lower warning line going up into our terminal fifth and as i say i do think we can push higher again i'll be targeting the upper median line rather than the upper warning line because this is the s p and not the nasdaq so yeah uh, and then zooming in let's go on the four hourly just to take a look at this part of the uh, the terminal phase for this move up so it is the this pitchfork right here that i'm monitoring so again shift pitchfork first pivot second pivot third pivot and I think it was the linear scale it's best seen on again yeah linear scale again hugging the lower median line yeah again very good to see multiple tests of it and probably likely to add to support for the continued move up and i'll be following this pitchfork up until november 3rd a breach to the downside is definitely weak for stocks and i would be very concerned about a big sell-off if we come beneath the lower warning line so that's your invalidation um SMP could it reach 4000 let's have a look so where's our intersection upper warning line of this pitchfork I think is possible uh, around November 3rd so you've got it 4200 and the upper median line is around 4000 so maybe probably the, the upper median line is a more modest target of around yeah just around 4000 so that's the SMP so the indices all giving a similar picture as I say Nasdaq I believe will be more aggressive with its move to the upside now just looking at our main stock to focus on obviously there's lots of key blue chip stocks to take a look at but I do like Apple I think it's very representative of the overall markets um, so let's take a look at this on the weekly so the large account I had it as this wave one two three four five obviously it looks really distorted uh, on the linear on the log it looks like this one two three four and then we're going to a fifth of the fifth we've got a one two three up to here four and fifth yeah again looks distorted because all on the log scale everything is squashed together linear scale will look like this so your final fifth wave which is a one two then you've got your extended third which is a one two three four five then you've got your four and then we've gone into our fifth which keeps wanting to go higher and i do expect it will continue to go higher um, and we can follow this pitchfork now for the terminal fifth wave so if we zoom in it's on the daily so you can see here this is what i really like this pitchfork this is what i've been mentioning in the group about this pitchfork on apple now i did think that it would hold at the median line because throughout the whole of this pitchfork it had been hugging onto this median line time and time again yeah um so i thought it was going to hold but we saw a bit of a blip in price action to the downside but very nice to see some good uh there was good volume that came in on apple actually so if we're going on the four hourly do see a bit of a spike in volume here in contrast to the preceding uh, lower volume so good to see with it being a bit of a bounce and yes it's best seen on the linear time frame on the daily as such and yeah certainly i'd be targeting the upper warning line of this pitchfork come november 3rd so that can take us to around 600 um sorry five five forty probably around five forty i'd be looking out for on the nasdaq that's your upper warning line intersection with november third 
Um, so I think that's a reasonable place to have a preliminary target around 540 on Apple. So yeah, very interesting pitch for Very nice to see it hold up. Again, a breach of this low warning line. So note that this is a shift pitch fork on the linear scale. Um, and a breach of the lower warning line would suggest that we're seeing weakness in this market. All right, so that pretty much rounds up equities. And now we're going to take a look at commodities. So we're going to run into gold right now. So let's pull up the gold chart. So gold is what everyone's been talking about. It's, it's on every news channel is talking about gold right now. Everyone is focused on the price of gold. And no doubt people will be buying in when actually, to me, it's looking like, although there's a, a backdrop that supports high gold prices, it is looking a little bit overbought on a technical point of view. So I wouldn't be buying in at this point. It, will, it was a good investment, uh, but it's at a take profit level in my opinion right now. So I had been looking at this for a good while now as a making a major cup and handle. So you've got your, your very curved out bottom, and then rather than just shooting up, we've got this curved move up and yeah we've reached all-time high so you, that's often what you see with the cup then you get your handle and you push higher so could be a bit of a take profit level where we see a bit of a drawback that said i would not be shorting this market um there's too many things that are suggesting um you know that you know that are holding the value of gold up right now so um, obviously, you've got interest rates at zero percent, so there's no uh, cost opportunity lost um, in, by investing in gold. Um, on top of that, you've got a weakening dollar, you've got economic uncertainty. Um, all of these things uh, support high gold prices, so I would not want to short it. But the technicals, I think, have kind of milked the move and taken it as high as it can go for now. I don't want to say it can't go higher because obviously it is it had a lot of consolidation behind it and it is pushing higher but there's a lot of a few three key levels of resistance so we've got all-time highs and our old, oldest daily blocks which we can see on the daily time frame uh, if we zoom in on that you can see this one and this one right here so there are, I think it's 1901 is the highest and we've kind of just gone through that if we go back on the weekly now So yeah, we've pretty much hit that level, slightly breached it. You can see the current uh, closing price is at that 1901 point. So we're literally hovering around this point. Now there's two key pitchforks that have been monitoring for this. So again, the Elliott wave count can be ambiguous. There's lots of different ways. Uh, some people will be looking at this as corrective, like an A, B, uh, sorry, A, uh, regular flat B, and then going into a C. Alternatively, people will see it as an impulsive move. So it could be a one regular flat wave two, then into a third, and we're going to push a lot higher. Um, but either way, the way I've been looking at it, the, with the from a pitchfork point of view, I saw this as an initial impulse to the upside, then a correction. So then I'm looking at the following price action from there. So looking at the first two major waves, so first wave, second wave, you've got your first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, original pitchfork. Now this pitchfork has worked wonderfully well. Um, in fact, let's just minimize the other pitchfork, uh, that one. So look how well this pitchfork has worked. So we had a really nice run into the median line, pull back. We then get above the median line, use it as support, run into the upper median line. And then we make this complex correction here using the median line as support then using the upper median line as support. And then we've had a run into our upper warning line, which has slightly been overcome here on the weekly time frame. Okay. Now, if we just pull up the other pitchfork that I've been monitoring, it's not as good as this bigger pitchfork. Price isn't being respected quite as well. But what I want to demonstrate is how it's actually gone up aggressively. It's followed an original pitchfork. So that's using your first pivot down here, second and third. This is the steep part of the move. Yeah. So that's why it's followed more of an original pitchfork. And you can see, again, we're at the upper warning line. So we've got an intersection of upper warning lines being hit, as well as our horizontal level, which is where our all-time highs are, around 1900. So I'm a little bit cautious for a bit of a pullback here. 
But on top of that, the fundamentals are really suggesting that this market can go higher. So any pullback, I would anticipate as more of a sideways bit of price action rather than any aggressive move down. So that's the reason I wouldn't short it. On top of that, it's a take profit level in my opinion. So that's why I'm not going long either. All right. So that is gold. Very interesting market. Uh, next up, next up is WTI. Um, so WTI or West Texas Intermediate Oil has basically is made what I believe is this massive WXYXZ, massive corrective sequence WXYXZ right there. And I was anticipating this sell off not quite as drastic as it was. So when it was in and around $60, I was anticipating a move down to 30, I think it was $35 I was looking at. It was basically the value it was at prior to the US going into Iraq, um, which was around $30 odd. And obviously we saw that massive, massive sell off uh, where it's come down to $11 on this chart. Um, and then we've seen this big bounce back to the upside. now. It has been an impressive bounce. Now, the question, obviously, everyone wants to know, has it got another leg down? Is it going to make a further lower low? And in my opinion, we've finished this major correction here. I don't think it comes down lower. I think this was an exaggerated move down. Um, I'm not saying we're going to suddenly start racing higher, but and I think it's going to make some more complex corrective move to the upside, basically. Uh, but it has come up to a very key technical level where I think we're going to be met by some significant resistance. So I'll mention the reasons for that. So I've got these dotted red lines, which are our oldest daily blocks that I've drawn on. And we're at the upper one here at $41. So that was a very key level if we look at the oldest bit of price action uh, where these daily blocks originate. Um, and I want to show you how there's a few things acting as resistance right now. So if we go in on the four hourly, on the linear scale, so I was monitoring this pitchfork, which we were holding very nicely. First pivot, second pivot, third pivot, original pitchfork. So it was really staying nicely within that pitchfork up until this point on the 24th of June. Then it started going more sideways. Yeah. And as it went sideways, you'll also appreciate if we look at our MACD, you can see the obvious divergence that we're getting right now. So you can see the lower highs on our MACD. And obviously we're getting these continued higher highs on uh, the price action. So obvious divergence, setting up a potential aggressive move to the downside. Um, so that's two things pointing that uh, to the uh, a bit of downside here. Well, three things in fact. So the $41 uh, level of resistance based on historic price levels. We've got the MACD divergence. We've got the fact that we've left this uh, original pitchfork and the last thing that I want to mention is just looking, let's go back and take off MACD. Let's pull up camera of pivots. Uh, camera of pivots on the daily time frame was the, where it's most significant. And uh, we can take off everything else. I want to show you how basically camera of pivots are very, very useful here. So you can see R3, S3, then we run up and we break out the R4. This suggests we're going into an uptrend, okay? As a result, when we enter our next range, we go into the R4 quite easily, but we don't really break out of the R4. As a result, it's a slight show of weakness. It means the uptrend is coming to a, a bit of a, um, a tail end. And then, so what happens? We enter our next range. When we come into our significant resistance, which is our R3, now we're seeing it act as resistance. So I was anticipating either the R3 or the R4 acting as resistance. And I think it's going to be R3. Lots of reasons for that level acting as resistance. So I do think we see a bit of a rollover to the downside and then an eventual move up. So on oil, those are the reasons that I expect a bit of a pullback. I'd be looking for a, at least a 50% pullback. So we have gone up from 11 to 41. And I'd be on the linear scale to look at a 50% pullback to around $26. That's where I'd be looking for price to come down. And then I reckon it makes another leg to the upside. Okay, so those are my views on WTI. Next up, I want to take a look at uh, Camco. So this is, as I say, probably my favorite stock right now from a long term investment point of view. 
Um, so what we'll do, first of all, we're on the weekly time frame. Let's take off the pivots and we will take a look at the major count, first of all. So I've got this a one, two, three, four, five. This, the log scale appears nicer on the linear. One, two, three, four, five. Then we've got this major correction here where we've come down and pretty much tested our top of uh, wave one right here. Yeah, so really nice pullback. It's over a really good amount of time, okay? I'm gonna show you in a moment when we look at weed stocks, uh, how the time that's surpassed is much greater here on uh, Camco. So Camco, sorry, I don't know if I mentioned, it's a uranium stock. And yeah, if you look at uranium stocks in general, they look very oversold. And the technical analysis now is pointing to, you know, price pushing to the upside. So log scale, I've got, uh, let's go on the log scale. I've got this as a major WXY, so that's your W, that's your X, and that's your Y to the downside, all right? Now, using a pitchfork for that, so that's your first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, modified shift pitchfork. The pitchfork work, works very, very nicely. So nice run into the median line, use the 0 0.5 as resistance, taking us down to the lower median line, up to the median line, and then down back to the lower median line, back to the median line. So you can see how the lines are working very well. So it's a very nice pitchfork to use. Now, with us being at the median line now, after a pretty strong move to the upside, I, I wouldn't be surprised for a little bit of profit taking at this point, okay? So again, although I'm uh, bullish on this market, this is not a level where uh, I want to buy in. It is pretty nice that we're above this horizontal level that was at $11.5, but I'm not sure we stay above it for too long. I think we see a bit of a, a drawback um but overall yeah i see this ultimately making all-time highs um but yeah this initial leg to the upside looks like it may be a little bit overbought at present as i say the median line is the the main reason that i'll be a bit cautious about going long as soon as basically i'm using this pitchfork as guidance basically so as soon as we get above the median line i'll be looking for longs again as simple as that yeah it's been a very substantial pitchfork uh, and i really like the fact that it looks like a completed wxy to the downside um so yeah above the median line i'll be looking for longs um obviously there is that risk that it makes another lower low but the fact that uranium has been selling at such low prices for such a long time that just isn't really sustainable i think you know we, i've just been waiting for it to make its move up and this looks like the key show of strength that we needed to see here on camco so next up let's move on so we will take a look at our weed stock and the favorite that i like to look at is canopy growth so canopy growth as i say we just like on Camco, you get that nice impulse to the upside. So this is a wave one, two, three, four, five. Again, log scale looks distorted. Linear looks a lot better. So there's your wave one, two, three, four, and we're going to a fifth, which is a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, back on your log scale, then we correct. Uh, again, we come down and test our wave one, which is nice to see. So we've got like an ABC to the downside, testing our wave one. But the time frame for this correction doesn't look like it's completed. And that's why I think this initial ABC correction is just a major W. Then we're going up into an X and then we come down and make a further lower low. Um, yeah, so this is if stocks turn out to be bullish, which I anticipate they will be, and we're gonna find out next week. I anticipate it was probably coming up in canopy growth up to around could come up to $29 obviously the key line to take out would be the upper warning line of this pitchfork which is an original pitchfork using our first pivot second pivot third pivot and yeah a couple of nice tests of the median line we're now at the upper warning line and I'd want to see price get above the upper warning line for confirmation of this move to the upside there's this key horizontal level at this point here around $29 which I've got my eyes on so that's where I'm looking for price to potentially come up to come November 3rd and then look for another sell-off to the downside. So that's how I'm seeing this market at this moment in time. Uh, next up, we will take a look at the much-awaited Bitcoin. So I spoke about this in detail um, 
just in my last video and there isn't that much to add to be honest so basically the long-term count that i'm looking at at present on bitcoin is this major wxy whereby this is your w x i believe we're currently in the third wave of so that's your first wave that's your second and we're going into our third i see it finding resistance at around 16 to 16.5 k basically using the block that is around this point here um, as well as using the 0 0.786 fib retracement on the linear scale from the high uh, to the bottom here and we're currently hovering at resistance we're going on the daily so we are hovering just beneath this level 9833 is the key level that i keep mentioning to my group the key level to monitor and the reason is it's the halfway point between zero and the all-time high at 19666 so 9833 is your halfway point and so not too surprising that we're seeing price have difficulty getting above it but as it uh, as price struggles to get above that level so this level right here we are getting the lows rather than coming down we're getting higher lows yeah so certainly not a triangle from an elliott wave point of view uh, but just looking at it from a price action point of view looking at the shape altogether you're getting those higher lows we keep hammering into this horizontal level of resistance which i think is going to give way soon just like we saw previously when we got our horizontal level kept getting hammered you get lower highs eventually break to the downside here here's your cutoff point here's your higher lows break to the upside okay so this is the kind of thing i'm looking out for once again right here and i'm quite confident that this is looking very corrective nothing about this looks impulsive i do not think this is a major uh, the start of a major impulse to the upside and we make all-time highs i think we struggle at 16k 16.5k max then we come down probably to around 2k then we can start looking for a massive move to the upside but yeah i'd be very uh, that's a definite take profit level around 16.5k i'd be happy to change my views if it breaks above uh because i do think you know from a bearish point of view they need to defend that level if it is to be bearish but certainly there's nothing looking impulsive about this right now um so yeah basically i've got this as a wxy up to here we're going into our uh, an x wave from there and then we're going to go into another corrective sequence to the upside looking for 6.5 as the target um, so if we zoom in there was this pitchfork that i was monitoring here watching this bit of price action so first pivot second pivot third pivot it was the modified shift that was holding price well and we saw that i mentioned to the group you know the breakout of the upper warning line would lead to a, a more substantial move to the upside and that's essentially what we're seeing uh, in keeping with these higher lows and yeah we push higher wouldn't be surprised for us to come up and test 9833 very soon and probably based on what happens next week on thursday uh, with our gdp announcement we'll determine you know whether we break 9833 or not uh, personally my bias is that we do uh, but yeah that will be the the fundamental deadline that needs to be overcome so that pretty much wraps up our nine charts tried to make it as diversified as possible there's a good chance that we will do this on a regular basis so leave your comments in the video down below to give me some feedback did you like today's video it was a little bit of a mix up lots of different markets i would like to know whether you found this of use um so yeah would very much appreciate your comments there don't forget i will be doing that if you do want regular updates on crypto in particular where i put a lot more attention into my analysis i do regular weekly updates you get full access to the educational material i'm doing a 50 percent discount uh, which will be available for the next two days that will be available in the description to this video and yeah i think we're going to wrap it up there so very exciting times ahead guys and take care